Hello and welcome. After weeks of bombardment and pleas for a humanitarian corridor, the International Committee of the Red Cross says it is to be allowed into Baba Amr, the besieged district of the Syrian city of Homs. There was a very brief mission by the Syrian Red Crescent last Saturday, but only a very few people were evacuated then. This development has come as the opposition forces said they were withdrawing in the face of a major ground offensive. We'll hear from the ICRC and a Syrian citizen journalist in a moment. First, James Robbins reports. Syrian heavy armor blasting its way deeper and deeper into what was a rebel stronghold. These pictures from Baba Amma, although impossible to verify, also show civilians putting out buckets to gather water from falling snow desperate after almost a month under siege, as fears grow for their safety after the regime's history of brutality. So what seems to have happened in Homs is this. With three adjoining neighborhoods in opposition hands, fighters regarded Baba Amma as their local stronghold, and the regime has been ruthless in its assault. Now the rebels have apparently withdrawn, vowing to fight on elsewhere. Syrian State TV's English language service tells it quite differently. Syrian TV camera toured areas in Baba Amru and recorded the huge devastation caused by the armed terrorist groups who committed horrific crimes against civilians there. In Paris, the largest faction of Syria's divided opposition announced it will now put more emphasis on military action, apparently fearful of wider defeat. For President Assad, seizing Baba Amma is a big tactical victory and a major reverse for the opposition. And Syria still divides the international community. In Geneva, a UN demand for humanitarian access was passed, but Russia and China both voted against. Even so, for the Assad regime, the long term could still be bleak. <laughs> the rebels are still fighting elsewhere across Syria. Over recent months, they have been strengthened by defectors from the regime's forces and by a supply of weapons. But it's clear that Syria's agony is going to be drawn out and bloody. James Robbins, BBC News. Well, Carla Haddad Mardini is from the International Committee of the Red Cross. And a short time ago, she told us that they are very worried about the humanitarian situation in Baba Amr. We fear the needs are great. Uh, we, people have been cut off from everything. They haven't had electricity, no food, no water, no medical care, no medical equipment. So the ICRC and the Syrian Arab Red Crescent have as a top priority the evacuation of the seriously wounded, the ill, and the evacuation of the dead. We'll be bringing in food and medical aid. As to the figures of the teams, this is being organized right now, so I can't give you more. We also don't have the figures of how many people were seriously wounded or dead. We'll have to see what the situation is on the spot. It's a priority for us to enter so we can assess the situation on the ground and uh, decide how we're going to respond the most efficiently and uh, the most rapidly. Carla Mardini from the International Committee of the Red Cross there. Well, we're joined now from Cairo by Rami Jarrah, a citizen journalist from Damascus, who has moved to Cairo and who has contacts with people across Syria. Rami, so first of all, can you tell us what you know about the situation in Homs, in particular the Baba Amr district, because we hear that there is a massive ground attack by Syrian forces there. Yeah, well, um, f first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, earlier this afternoon, what happened was regime forces stormed the area of Baba Amr in Hamas, coming in from a number of directions. Uh, this was due to the fact that the Free Syrian Army actually withdrew uh, early morning because they actually want these civilians protected. They, they no longer want to leave any excuses for the regime to continue its bombardment of the city, and, and rather than actually just running out of ammo, as, as we've heard going around. Uh, the Syrian regime have actually gone in on the ground, uh, performing a sort of street-to-street, alley-to-alley, house-to-house invasion right at, at this moment. And Rami, do you know who actually is in control of Homs? Do you have any idea? The Syrian government has always had the ability to be con in control of Homs with its military capabilities. The, the thing is here that the regime uses the FSA that they're quoting as terrorists 
as uh, the reason that they're bombarding it. What they're doing is they're killing an uprising. A 27-day siege on Baba Amr was, was a sort of explanation of that. 27 days, no water, no electricity, no source of communication. The only communication we had was activists with satellite equipment that were getting videos uploaded out to the country so the world, the, the world could see what was happening. Um, the, the control is definitely by the, the Syrian government. The government has much more capabilities, but this is a propaganda game that the regime plays. What do you mean by that? Uh, the, the government has accused Marie Colvin and Remy Ochlik of being uh, spies for foreign elements. This is just an example of many, many uh, accusations that the Syrian government makes. One other example is that the Syrian people are actually all with Bashar al-Assad, and um, the, there's only a few people demonstrating. The uh, ambassador to the UN, the Syrian ambassador to the UN, said that the Syrian government actually protects demonstrations. We haven't seen one yeah. mass demonstration, anti-government demonstration, in a central square in, in central Damascus, let's say. Okay. All we've seen is, is Assad rallies. And I, I, find, I find that very weird, given that they're going to be protected by the government. Okay. This is all really a cover-up for, for, for that. And Rami, I'm sure that the Syrian authorities would, would strenuously um, refute that, the, the allegations that um, they targeted uh, the late Sunday Times journalist Marie Colvin and, uh, and her colleague. But anyway, I mean, what do you know about the state of the people in Homs? Presumably nobody can uh, get out of the city much as they would like to. Some had fled to neighboring Lebanon. Some people have fled to neighboring Lebanon. Some people are fleeing to circling areas of Baba Amr, such as the Insha'at area. Um, the, the situation is grave. The, the, the fact is, the fact remains that now total communications have been cut with people in Baba Amr. Um, we're only in touch with people who encircle the area, activists who have remained there in order to get the word out on what's happening. Uh, people are in a grave situation where the Syrian government is now cr performing a door-to-door -door arrest. They're arresting activists, anyone they suspect is activists. What we're worried about now is a revenge from the Syrian army. That's what we're worried about, and that's what we're, we're working on. We're trying to get in, in, in touch with activists. Yeah. We hear that the, the ICRC are going in tomorrow. Right. This is not enough. Okay. We've had 27 days of yeah. calling on international NGOs right. to do something. They haven't okay. done anything except Ram for negotiating with the Syrian regime. All right, Rami Jarrah, I've got to stop you there. Thanks very much indeed for joining us live from Cairo. Now let's take a look at some of the day's other news.